Good morning, everyone. So good to have y'all here with us today. Uh, my name is not Dan Ward. Dan is uh, on a trip this weekend, and um, so thank y'all for being here. We have uh, Mary Ellen Robinson back with us today, Barrett's on Continuing Education. So Mary Ann is, uh, we wanted to welcome her back with us. Um, if you will, please see the back of your bulletin for announcements and our prayer list. Uh, announcements wise today, Christian education will meet very briefly right after worship. Tomorrow, Presbyterian Women's Circle Number One meets at 10.30. Wednesday, prayer meeting and choir practice at 6.30 and 7 p.m. accordingly. Thursday, uh, season three with the Chosen continues at 6.30. And then next week, on Wednesday, Valentine's Day the 14th, we have an Ash Wednesday service at 5.30 and a wonderful catered meal to follow. So please join us for that. Uh, Lynn wanted me to remind that the flower calendar has some remaining spots and the list is back there beside Stuart. Um, so if uh, you can uh, help us with the flower calendar uh, for concerns, um, back of your bulletin, uh, I want to point out uh, Miss Gladys Melvin was moved from Shoreland to Columbus uh, Regional Hospital this week. She's not doing well. Keep her and her um, family in your prayers, please. To include uh, Morgan Pierce, uh, her surgery is scheduled for this week. We want to add, uh, Mary Ellen informed me of a child named Amelia. Amelia is on a ventilator with a terminal disease called Batten's disease. So please keep little Amelia and her family in your thoughts and prayers. Um, also, a friend of Lynn and mine, um, she has a sister, and uh, her sister's uh, battling cancer. And so we ask, um, if you will, uh, her name is uh, Rosalind White, who lives down near Lake Waccamaw. And to round it out, uh, I was informed Suzanne King of Whiteville, I believe Joanne, knows her uh, pancreatic cancer. So uh, please highlight these and uh, keep these folks in your thoughts and prayers. And with that, we will worship. Thank you.
morning. It is good to be back with you. Our call to worship is found printed in your bulletin. Have you heard? God heals the broken and blesses the wounded. Sing praise to God. Have you heard? God forgives and the past is over and done. Sing praise to God. Have you heard? God lifts up the downcast and gives peace to the troubled. Sing praise to God. Have you heard? God smooths out rough paths and makes a way for us. Sing praise to God. Have you heard? God gives power to the weak and renews our strength. Sing praise to God. We come to worship the eternal God. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open and all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join in our prayer of confession found, God bless you, found in our bulletin. Gracious God, our sins are too heavy to carry, too real to hide, and too deep to undo. Forgive what our lips tremble to name, what our hearts can no longer bear, and what has become for us consuming fire of judgment. 
set us free from a past that we cannot change. Open to us a future in which we can be changed. And grant us grace to grow more and more in your likeness and image through Jesus Christ, the light of the world. If anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. Behold, everything has become new. All this is from God, to whom we have been reconciled by Christ. Rejoice then, for we are known, accepted, loved, and forgiven. Thanks be to God. Prepare our hearts, O God, to accept your word, silence in us any voice but your own, that hearing we may also obey your will, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our first scripture reading this morning comes from the prophet Isaiah. It's from the 40th chapter, beginning at verse 21. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them like a tent to live in, who brings princes to naught and makes the rulers of the earth as nothing, Scarcely as we planted, scarcely sown, scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth. When he plows upon them, they wither, and the tempest carries them off like stubble. To whom then will you compare me, and who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high and see. Who created these? He who brings out their host and numbers them, calling them all by name, because he is great in strength, mighty in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God? Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength, and they shall mount up with wings like eagles, and they shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Our second reading this morning comes from the Gospel according to Mark. This is the first chapter, beginning at verse 29. As soon as they left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sundown, they brought to him all who were sick and possessed by demons, and the whole city was gathered around the door. 
and he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place, and there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, everyone is searching for you. He answered, let us go on to the neighboring towns so that I may proclaim the message there also. For that is what I came to do. And he went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. The word of the Lord. Servant ministry is presented in today's gospel reading in a way that sounds like something much less than good news as we meet Simon Peter's mother-in-law. Three verses of scripture contain everything we need to know about this healing encounter. Listen as I read these three verses again and imagine the scene. As soon as they left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told Jesus about her. He came, took her by the hand, and lifted her up. The fever left her, and she began to serve them. Mark tells us that the men had just left the synagogue. They're hungry, and they brought friends home with them. The woman of the house is down with fever, and now her son-in-law is bringing home a hungry group from the meeting. Then Jesus enters the story. He takes Simon's feverish mother-in-law by the hand, lifts her up, and she is healed. She gets up out of bed and waits on them. One minute she's lying in bed with a fever, and the next she's preparing food and trying to figure out if she's got enough food in the house to scrape together to feed all these hungry men. Where is the good news for Simon's mother-in-law? The part that stands out as awkward is that she gets up and begins to serve them. The life-giving transformation in these few verses from Mark is revealed in that one word in the story that causes the most of her problems. After all, if it was said that she got up and began to talk with them, or got up to walk with them, or began to eat with them, the story wouldn't be such a problem. But Mark is clear that Simon Peter's mother-in-law began to serve them. Jesus described his own life and ministry on earth as service. Jesus told his disciples that they were serving God, and their work for God would be menial. The disciples' service to others would be difficult, yet the life of service Jesus described as a life of being a servant minister was the heart of his ministry as well. Now we can return to these three verses of scripture. Simon's mother-in-law had a life-changing encounter with the Messiah. Jesus came into her house and touched her. In Jesus' life-changing touch, Peter's, Simon Peter's mother-in-law was healed and made whole. Perhaps this is where you find yourself in the story. Are you looking for a life-changing encounter with God? Perhaps it's been a long time since you felt that healing touch. You have come to the right place. As you discover grace, mercy, and the love of God that he has for all of us. For those of us who have felt the touch of Jesus in our own lives, we find ourselves alongside Simon's mother-in-law in this story. Mark describes Jesus going to her, touching her, and healing her in the past tense. Jesus took her by the hand, lifted her up, and the fever left her. These are all described as actions that are over and done with. Her service was not a one-time, 
over and done action, like cooking that meal. Simon's mother-in-law began to serve Jesus and his followers. But the meaning of her actions was transformed by Jesus' healing touch. She did not serve and minister to them because of duty. She served out of love. We are to follow the example of these early disciples and Simon Peter's mother-in-law. After we have come to know Jesus and have experienced the forgiveness and healing he offers, we are to respond to the love of God that he has shown to us by sharing that love with those around us. As we share God's love, we are living into our own vocation as ministers, ministers of the gospel, whether you are a teacher, an attorney, a real estate agent, a salesperson, a doctor, an investment person, retired, a volunteer, a parent or a grandparent, spouse or friend. Our everyday work will be ministry, not by ordination, but by our baptism. And as we share the love and grace we have known in Jesus, we offer that listening ear, a kind word, a helping hand, and in that process, we experience God's love. Far from a chore, that loving service is how love grows within us and healing happens. Sometimes the hardest chore becomes the most rewarding. Most of you know I have been incredibly blessed to be in this church for six years now to fill in when I am needed. And it brings me joy every time I come. There are times when I have shared personal stories, some sweet, some funny, some not always the happiest. But I can share those stories because I feel comfortable sharing them with you. Sometimes sharing those not so happy stories help in my healing. In those times, you are serving me by allowing me to share with you. Healing doesn't always come from some great prophetic word or some great lecture. Many times it's a simple nod of the head, a smile, a simply I understand, a simple let me pray for you. There's a difference between being healed and being cured. Our understanding of healing especially in our gospel stories, means something more. It means a restoration of wholeness, particularly when it comes to our spiritual lives. When we are healed, even if we are not cured of that physical ailment, we have the ability to rejoin our community in whatever way we can and be in our peace on earth. In our reading from the Gospel of Mark today, notice that Jesus doesn't seek out people who are sick. Instead, they are brought to him, either by their own or through the disciples. Simon's mother-in-law is brought to Jesus as soon as they get to the house. And as soon as he heals her, she immediately goes about serving Jesus and the other people in the household. She was restored to her community and to wholeness. Her healing demanded a response, and she served. Jesus' fame was already spreading when he taught. He was in the synagogue at Capernaum and cast out unclean spirits there. But Jesus' call was always first and foremost to proclaim the good news of the kingdom of God. Everything else, including the miracles and the exorcisms, we're secondary. As it happens in human nature, people are getting caught up with the messenger and not the message. We've all been there. We've been caught up in the hype of someone who is so charismatic that the next thing you know, you're buying something, you're giving away your life savings, you're talking to that telemarketer on the phone. Something you really didn't want to do. It's something that that person has seduced you into. Jesus was trying to avoid that reputation. 
He didn't want to be seen as just another miracle worker because that was not his mission. His mission was to proclaim that the kingdom of God is here through God's authority, not human authority. Towards the end of today's reading, we learn that early in the morning, Jesus goes out to a deserted place to pray. Observing morning prayers was a regular part of Jewish religion practice. And we know that the desert or the wilderness in biblical tradition were places where a person could make contact with God. So it makes sense that Jesus goes there. After all that pouring out of himself in previous days, Jesus needed to get in touch with God again. We know how that feels. When the boss needs, our spouse needs, our family needs, our school needs, our church needs, our community needs us. It's easy to forget what God needs. So Jesus goes out to pray to be reminded of who he is and what his mission is by the one who sent him. How many times have we felt that way? The needs of the world around us are overwhelming. We could help people all day and never fully satisfy their needs. Jesus is showing us another way. He's teaching us that we need our own deserted place, our own place to pray and heal. In order to serve others, we must continue to serve ourselves and continue our healing through our relationship with Jesus. Amen. I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, by the mercy of God, to present yourselves as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, as we join together in saying the Apostles' Creed, found in your hymnal on page 35. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and 
and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He ascended into heaven. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Almighty God, in Jesus Christ, you taught us to pray and promise that what we ask in your name will be given to us. Guide us by your Holy Spirit that our prayers for others will serve your will and show your love as we pray the prayer Jesus taught to his disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive those who us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. With gladness, let us present the offerings of our life and labor to the Lord.
Lord, you are worthy to receive glory and honor. Accept these gifts that they may be used for the advancement of your church. Amen. <laughs> 